Sometimes the serialized nature of comics can be really infuriating. World-changing plots seem to just fall out of the sky and are then teased in crumbs over way too long a period, and waiting for any sense of resolution can be an exasperating process. And that's only the best case scenario. Sometimes nothing gets resolved. Maybe a writer will leave a book, maybe the whole series will be cancelled, maybe everyone involved just sort of forgot. It's maddening. You invest time and money on new comics trying to find out what's going on in a story you care about, only to realize you're never going to get the answer. I'm Ben from What Culture, and here are 10 comic book plots that will never be resolved. Number 10. Wildcats Volume 4 In 2006, Grant Morrison was brought in to reboot Wildcats along with Jim Lee with more of the political, social and philosophical themes his work was known for. The series was set in a more realistic world than traditional comics, where superheroes fought against corporate America in an attempt to make the world a better place. Yes. Wildcats number one established this new status quo and then there was nothing. The rest of the series was put on hold after the first issue had no chance of ever returning. The Wildcats were rebooted again a couple of years later by a completely different creative team before the entire Wildstorm imprint was shut down in 2010 and its characters folded into the main DC universe. Number 9. The Other Miles Morales Marvel's Ultimate line promised to shake up conventions and tell stories completely unlike those of the main Marvel Universe. It delivered on that promise by killing off Peter Parker and replacing him with an all-new character, Miles Morales, as Spider-Man. Miles proved popular, and so, to capitalize on this, Marvel had him cross over with the main Universe Spider-Man in the miniseries Spider-Men. It was a fun collaboration involving the Spider-Men teaming up to stop a dimension-hopping Mysterio, but ended on a cliffhanger. When Peter returned home, he googled Miles Morales to see who his dimension's version of the other Spider-Man is, and the final panel is him staring in shock at the computer screen. So who is the other Miles Morales? Sadly, we'll never know, because none of the other writers bothered to pick up the plot point. Number 8. Dazzler's Immortality In 2006, Chris Claremont revived his British X-Men spin-off team Excalibur, and mutant pop star Dazzler was added to the team. New Excalibur No. 1 opens with Dazzler being attacked by clones of the original X-Men, and for once, surprisingly, the battle goes the way a fight between five highly trained warriors and Katy Perry but with lasers should go, and Dazzler is killed. However, despite being dead for over 90 minutes, when Excalibur finds her body, Dazzler wakes up, seemingly fine. This happens several more times over the course of the series. Dazzler would die only to come back to life a few minutes later. Dazzler's resurrections didn't fit with her powers of turning sound into light and hinted that something big was happening to Alison Blair. It was a mystery that the rest of the team were determined to solve and there was even an issue titled So Why Is It I'm Not Dead? But despite that, the plot still hadn't been addressed by the end of the series. Number 7. The Supermen of America Superman Grounded was a storyline that saw the Man of Steel trek across America in an attempt to reconnect with its people, but it was so badly mishandled that the original writer left and replacement Chris Robinson retconned most of the plot as being due to mind control before the story had even finished. The story ends on an interesting note, though. After recommitting to protecting the people of America, Superman decides to recruit a team of heroes to help him and reforms the obscure 90s group The Supermen men of America to form a support network of superheroes across all of the US, including Steel, Superboy, Supergirl, Native American hero Super Chief, and former villain Livewire. The group did have a lot of potential, but before any of it could be explored, they were wiped out of existence by the new 52 reboot. Number 6. The Mystery of Facade Web of Spider-Man number 113 set up a new villain with a murder mystery plot. After sneaking into a demonstration of the facade armor, a Daily Bugle reporter photographs someone killing the scientist who made it and taking the suit before he himself is killed for taking the photos. Fellow reporter Betty Brandt jumps on the case to uncover the murderer thief's identity, narrowing it down to three suspects. J. Jonah Jameson's son John, photographer Cole Cooper, and industrialist Archer Bryce. Before Betty can crack the case, though, Facade attacks her at her home, but luckily Spider-Man swings in to stop him and is able to destroy the armor, but its wearer escapes, his identity still unknown. It seemed he'd return as a recurring mystery villain, but unfortunately the next story was the start of the Clone Saga, a plot that stretched out years longer than originally intended. And then the writer left partway through, taking Facade's identity with him. 
Number 5. The Avengers Fight Against Blood Race Sean Dolan was initially a squire of Avengers member Black Knight, but he was cursed by the knight's sword and became the villain Blood Race. Despite refusing to return the sword like an idiot, he reformed, vowed to help others, and went to Slovenia, which had been devastated by Ultron. While there, he was overcome with the urge to use the Ebony Blade and absorbed the souls of all the millions of dead in Slovenia, growing gigantic in size and power and impossible to defeat, even by the Avengers. Scarlet Witch ended up sealing him within the country's borders, sacrificing an entire country until a better solution came along, and it never did and the Ebony Blade simply returned to the Black Knight with no explanation at all. Number 4. The Upstarts and their prize The Upstart story was a rather clear attempt to get rid of older characters, as they kicked off a deadly point-scoring game by killing off mutants including Emma Frost, the Helions, and even Magneto. Annoyingly, they then ran out of viable targets, so the Game Master changed the game and allowed them to capture targets instead. Confusingly, no one actually knew what the prize was, and then it turned out that the founder of the game was revealed to be Selene, the Black Queen of the Hellfire Club, who had her own hidden agenda and promised that no one knew what the real prize was. The whole thing just kind of fizzled out, the group disbanded, and we never found out what the prize they were all so obsessed with even was. Well, see you later. Number 3. Batman's Involvement with the Flying Graysons At the end of Final Crisis, Bruce Wayne seemingly sacrificed himself to kill Darkseid, so Dick Grayson took over as Batman. After Two-Face attacked the Batcave, Dick decides he has to move the entire thing to preserve its secrets and finds a USB drive hidden by Batman containing numerous files on the murder of the Flying Graysons and the suggestion that Bruce knew something about their deaths that he was hiding from him. Sounds intriguing, right? Well, unfortunately, the plot got lost during a change of writers. Judd Winnick left temporarily, and Tony Daniel left the mystery alone, assuming Winnick would continue it at some point, but he ended up staying on the book until it was rebooted as part of the New 52. I suppose you could call Batman a shit stepdad who's withholding information about your murdered parents for wankers. Hashtag shit stepdad who's withholding information about your murdered parents for wankers. Number 2. Daredevil Bullseye. The Target. Fans were quite excited by the prospect of Kevin Smith's Daredevil Bullseye the Target after his excellent work on Guardian Devil. It was heavily influenced by 9-11, with Daredevil reflecting on what it's like living in a city that's just come through such a tragedy. The plot then moves on to Bullseye, who is hired by a terrorist group to take out an unknown target, and that was the entirety of Daredevil Bullseye the Target because only the first issue was ever released. Apparently, when Kevin Smith did the original Daredevil run, Editor-in-Chief Joe Quesada promised him he could write the first time Daredevil Devil and Bullseye meet after Karen Page's murder. When Smith later reminded him of it, Quesada said he would only keep that promise if Smith immediately started it, but then Smith went on hiatus to direct the film Jersey Girl and never returned to the comic despite his promise to. So it all stopped. Number 1. Shield Jonathan Hickman's S.H.I.E.L.D. revealed the secret identity of Marvel's premier spy agency and tied it into a sweeping historical epic, reaching back to the dawn of civilization. The series was recounted by an immortal Leonardo da Vinci, of course, and reimagined Marvel history to include Sir Isaac Newton as a Sorcerer Supreme and a brood invasion in ancient Egypt. Fun! The series went on hiatus in 2011 and hasn't been continued since. What really makes this one weird is that both Hickman and artist Dustin Weaver have said they've handed finished scripts for the remaining issues over to Marvel and that they've just not been released yet for whatever reason. Go on, live your life! And since Hickman no longer even works at Marvel, the chances of ever seeing the end of S.H.I.E.L.D. seem almost non-existent. And that's our list. Make sure you subscribe to the What Culture Comics YouTube channel for more lists like this, and don't forget to visit whatculture.com for daily news and articles. I'm Ben from What Culture, and thanks for watching.